All right. So, Aaron, where you look like you're in your shop or your garage. Yes, I'm in my garage. Awesome. Here in Illinois. Cool. And today is Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Yes, happy Thanksgiving. So what's your project? I got a barnwood bed my wife wants me to make. It's uh, kind of modern, modern. Yeah, you sent some pictures of some concepts that you had. I just wanted to make a three panel bed. So you have a timber frame barn on your property that I saw from the pictures where it's an old mortise and tenon construction so you've got those big beams which look like they're six by six or possibly even some eight by eights and probably some four by fours yeah and i got some uh two by twelves out there i can use for the uh, side rails two by twelve perfect yeah yeah yeah. so you don't care i mean you, you don't mind if it's a big massive kind of feeling bed because no. obviously if you use those timbers is going to start feeling like a big bed right I, I can either use two by twelves, two by eights. I got it all out there. Cool. I see that. I'm I'm a little envious of your pile of wood. <laughs> um, it looks like you got some really great stuff there. Yeah, and some of that the uh, wood I showed you that was out in the pole barn. I bought that from a guy around the corner. All that wood for a hundred dollars. Uh, <laughs> it was an estate sale. They said I could have all the wood on the property I wanted. So you went in there and got all the good stuff. All right. Well, you're going to come out way ahead on this bed build because you've got all that material for pretty much nothing. One of the ways that I construct and I build my headboards is because barn wood sometimes is not super stable or the really good looking stuff is the really weathered and cracked stuff. But I like to use the weathered and cracked stuff because it's got so much character. It's what I call Mother Nature's fingerprints, all that character on the barn wood. So I like to use those pieces, but they don't hold up. You know, you can see through them a lot of times. They're that, they're that weather. But what I'll do is I'll take a, a plywood sheet and I'll use that as a substrate, as a backing. And then I'll apply the wood to that. And that way you can use the most exotic weathered pieces, even though they may not be the most stable. Basically, you're creating the heavy veneer. You're using the solid wood. And you can diff get different layers by using different thicknesses of wood. So like if you want your vertical styles to have a certain thickness, say they're an inch and a half, and then your panels are three quarters, you have different reveals, different layers. So one of the techniques I use, um, and here's, a, here's an example. Yeah, there you go. You can see there, yeah. there's a pattern. And what I'm using, I noticed you have all those different textures of wood. There's the real weathered wood there in the center and on these little mitered corners. But then some of the less weathered wood surrounds that, creating kind of a frame and making this a piece of art. This looks like art in the middle of a frame. By applying it to a plywood back, you can create any pattern or any design that you desire. In this so, case, I've got them on the same level because it's a tabletop. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. But you can do this flat for a headboard, which I've done tons of them flat, or you can do different levels like you were talking about creating a um, panels, basically a frame and panel look. This is also done, this is just a close-up barnwood, but that's done right on the surface of a piece of plywood. So I'm not relying on the strength of the barnwood to, to create the infrastructure. All right, and what's the thickness of plywood you use? Three quarter. Three quarter? Yeah. Okay. You, know, you can get away with a half inch, either a half inch or three quarter plywood. And do you paint that black? Yeah, especially if there's whole nail holes and, and knots missing in your wood, you just paint the plywood black and it disappears back there, correct. Oh, but the idea being is you can do that diamond shape pattern or you can do just raised panels, but the construction method becomes super easy because you can basically from behind screw those panels and those boards onto that plywood and now you've got most of your headboard complete and now you have something super strong to attach the legs to. Right. Because you have this solid plywood backed rigid thing and then you put a cap board on it you know nice two yeah. by two by four cap on the top and that gives it a more rigidity more strength and it caps it off and finishes it off do you uh like like the old uh siding would you use the siding for the uh headboard part the old siding and then would you uh cut the edges and everything straight put them together or would you use the old tongue and groove i would cut everything new and, and straight and get rid of the tng the siding 
the weathered siding to me is the coolest look, the, the, the really weathered character yeah. side. So what I typically do is I'll make those into my panels. So that'll be kind of the featured piece and then use some of the interior pieces to frame around them because they still have some soft curve. They still have, just like your, your barn, your building behind you, there's that oxidation and there's rich color, but it doesn't have that heavy weather. And so you'll put that around it. When you sand everything, it starts to really contrast and have a lot of dynamic colors. All right. Would you uh, start sanding at what, 120? Yeah, 120 is fine. I, I, sometimes I'll get after it with 100 and even 80, depending on how rough the wood is. But I also love to leave the character. You can see in that one that I showed you, I'm not trying to sand it all away and get back to no wood. I want it to look like it came off the barn. Well, one of the things you can do, Aaron, is when you build it, if you do it with the plywood method, you make all your pieces, you lay them all out, but you don't attach them. Then you sand all your pieces individually. So you see the boards as separate boards when you round the corners. You know what I'm saying? So that so you want it to look like there were pieces from different parts of the barn married together. So you can sand all the individual pieces and then assemble it onto there. And that gives you a lot of control over the sand. And again, you can have fun with it. I mean, you can have your, your logo initials. I mean, you, if, you're, if you're doing basically a puzzle on a piece of plywood, you can come up with any pattern you want. You don't have to stay strictly raised panel style where it's just three panels. You can, you can make the middle panel bigger and the two panels smaller on the sides. There's a lot of options as far as styling goes. What, what would I do with the footboard? Three quarter inch plywood, but I have to just sandwich that in between? <laughs> If you're going to sandwich, you can use a half inch. You can use a thinner piece for sure because you're, you're going to gain all the strength from the front and the back. Plus, on, a, on the footboard, you're not going near as tall, so you don't have near as much worry about the strength and the waviness of it. But on the footboard, yeah, I would do a shorter piece. What sometimes I'll do is I'll just put the inside as plywood and stain that with a nice stain and then outside as barn wood. And so when you go in the bed and you look at your footboard, it's just right level with the bed, so you can't see it, but there's a stained piece of, you know, it's just stained plywood. So do you use, uh, like, uh, birch plywood or oak right. plywood? That's exactly what I use. I use either, I, a lot of times I'll use a Luon, which is a, basically it's a, um, uh, yeah. you know, you're familiar with Luon? If you can yeah. get half inch or three quarter Luon, I use a half inch Luon, and, and um, I'm, for, I'm totally blanking what, what the material is. But anyway, it takes a stain and it has a character already, so it looks real good for a footboard. But the same with the birch plywood. You just stain it dark and call it good. Well, a, quick, a quick way to do that, too, is if you put the plywood on there and you screw from behind a little bit, you can go and put a little thin piece of wood frame around the birch and just, like, just boom, boom, boom with one vertical, and all of a sudden it looks like a million bucks on the inside as well. Just just mill down some quarter inch wood, barn wood, and make a little frame and, and shoot it on there. And then use some really cool cap boards. A lot of times, these old buildings like yours, they had uh, horse stalls inside there. And the horses chewed on some of the rails, and the wood gets really cool and gnarly. And you can use that as your cap board and use that because it has a great story and it has a great look to it. Yeah, make it your own. And, and definitely when there's stories from your farm, that you can bring those stories into your house and go, this is where we used to feed the cows for the last 50, 60 years. And that's why this piece of wood looks the way it does. Those, those are the kind of things that really make a, a piece of furniture have a story. Um, another way that I attach my legs a lot of times is I will use, um, they have these timber locks is what they're called, or, or they're, you're probably familiar with them. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of ranches and farms use them, but they're really long. They come in, in four, six and eight inch lengths awesome, awesome ways of attaching the legs to the headboard. And you can tap a hole, drive them in, and then put a, a plug in there, just like you would have in the original timber frame structure. They would have, they would have driven the, the pin through the mortise and tenon. You can drive the head of a pin in there after you're done, and it looks like mortise and tenon, but it's also held together with these engineered bolts, these lag bolts. As far as finishing the uh, headboard and footboard, how would you go about that? Well, that's a great question. But once that's done and you've got everything sanded and you've got it put together, what I end up using 99% of the time is I will use a lacquer. Um, Deft is a brand, D-E-F-T, and it's a real good, simple lacquer. And I'll put, I'll put lacquer on the finished barn wood, the sanded barn wood, and I'll do two or three coats of that. And I'll use a satin or a semi-gloss. I usually don't use gloss that much. But. See, I, know, I never mess with the lacquering, really, because uh, when I did the – Cedar chest in the Cheval mirror, I used uh, Danish oil. 
the lacquer is going to be better because it, that barnwood is is um is soft. Obviously, it's a hundred years old and exposed to the weather. The lacquer gives it strength. It impregnates the barnwood and gives it rigidity and strength and helps it be more durable versus a Danish oil or just a wax. Then you're just putting a, a softener basically into the wood. So the lacquer is good. It's really, really, really simple to apply. You just you get a can of that and you put it on with a paintbrush. And the cool thing about Deft is it's self-leveling, so it doesn't show the paintbrush marks. It doesn't show. It just all goes on, and it looks like a million bucks. So is that going to fill the uh, crevices, or it won't? You... It's not. It's not like a liquid plastic. It's going to leave it okay. just like barnwood. It's not, and which I don't. I like it to feel like barnwood, and that's the cool right. thing. It's really, really thin product, so it's going to penetrate and harden, but it's not going to change the texture at all. After that, the key, the real key to make it unbelievable is an old English wax. It's, uh, I think it was 1880s or 1870s that they came out with it. But it's called Bry Wax. It's literally, it's, it's called Brie Wax, but it's spelled Bry Wax, B-R-I Wax. And it comes in different colors. And after you're done and you've got all your finish on there, your lacquer finish, you come back with that Bry Wax and you put that on heavy and polish it back off and you get the luster and richness of, of the hundred years of old barnwood that you got it's just magic with barnwood. So it's called bry wax, and that's what your final step will be. I can't find them now, but how about these uh, metal brackets to put the uh, side the uh, side rails on? Are they are they the bed rail brackets that lock together, or are they just yeah 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 the bed rail brackets that lock together? Yes and no. A lot of times when you build a barnwood bed like this, and you've got these big timbers, it's really a heavy. Thing. And so a lot of times the, the, the typical standard bed rail brackets aren't quite heavy enough to do the job. One of the things you can do is if, if they're short enough and you're using a 2 by 12 you can double them up. So if you get two of them on, on the rail side, then it's twice as strong and then it works real good. Right. The other option I, I do a lot of times is I just use angle iron and I'll bolt through the uh, side rail and then I'll lag that right into the headboard. Just a piece of angle iron. So if you use a two by twelve, you just take a ten inch strip of angle iron, bolt it through your side rail, and then lag it to your headboard. All right. So should I like paint those black, the bolts, or? Yeah, you know what I do a lot of times. This is another little secret that you're going to want to take with you in, in any projects in the future. Um, at your local uh, gun shop around there, they'll have what's called gun blue. And it's a bird for safety product, but it's for bluing guns. And a lot of times they use it for touching up. You've probably heard of it or seen it. It's magic with bolts. You just dip the head of the bolt in there, and instantly it's as antique as the wood it's going up against. The other thing that I do is those timber locks that I was talking about, where you're, you're lagging your, your post to your headboard, and then you can plug it with a nice big heavy plug so it looks like timber frame, mortise, and tenon. Um, those are usually black. So if you use those anywhere and, and don't want to plug them or don't want to hide them, they disappear anyways. So that's, that's, right. another, that's another nice feature. Yeah, I was going to just show you a couple of headboards here if I can find them to just, just to get your brain going um, on different patterns and options um, because they're pretty much endless. Well, cool, Aaron. It sounds like a great project. Here's what, here's the deal. I want to see progress as you go. So you have to shoot pictures of different stages, not just all at the end, but as you're going and as you're getting stuff done, I want to see what's happening. Yeah, I will. I'll let you, uh, I'll put it on your Facebook page there. Okay. Yeah. Email us and send us pictures. And then, and then as you go, we'll keep the story going. And then when you're finally done, you get it in, in your bedroom. We'll see the finest final finished piece. Well, great. Happy Thanksgiving. Yes, happy Thanksgiving and uh, have a good weekend. All right, you too. All right, thank you.